Thank you very much, Erin. Uh, we are looking forward to this grand final replay. The Broncos and the Roosters. The Roosters already made their way out onto Amy Park and Sahara Tamara starting, as you just mentioned, Erin. A player that could play pretty much in every position uh, in the team, such as her versatility, a quality player, a representative player as well, both with Queensland and Australia. And there's Chelsea Lenarduzzi on your screen, just next to Corey Parker. Ali Brigginshaw leading out the Brisbane Broncos, the defending premiers. They won the grand final last year, the last time these two sides met. 34 points to 12. The weather, well, it's typical Melbourne weather this afternoon. We've had bright sunshine. We've had some showers. Currently, it's pretty clear. Ali Brigginshaw, one of the key players in the NRLW competition. Jay Barrett in commentary hey, this afternoon. Straight in the and there's game. two of the key players, both in different right. positions for their right. teams, but they're inspirational hey, mate, leaders. Maya Matalfa and Ali Brigginshaw. Yeah, that's right, Salty. I think these girls are both up for big games. I know the Roosters will be still hurting from losing the grand final last year, and the Broncos, they want to get in the grand final this year, so there's plenty to play for this afternoon. Joe, are you surprised at the double change in the Roosters' halves, especially in these conditions with, with some wind around? Kira Dib, I thought, had a tremendous kicking game put back onto the bench. Okay. It does surprise me, actually, Stella, because she, like I said, she had a great game last week, didn't do anything wrong, but Zahara Tamara is a fantastic half. So I think she'll be fine there as well. It shows the depth of the Roosters' side. Well, we're underway. An important game for the Roosters after that first up loss to the Warriors last week at this very venue. Can they produce an upset this afternoon and halt this Broncos juggernaut? A very good last week against the Dragons uh, at Bankwest Stadium. One of the positives last week for the old Broncos organisation, the win of the Way NRLW team last week. But here is a early penalty for Brisbane. And they'll kick for touch, will they? Or just take the tap? No, they elect to take the tap. And his run of Peters. Another charge from her. And an excellent game last week. Into Roosters territory they go now, Brisbane. Well, very good last week in building pressure against the Dragons. Brigginshaw goes to Annette Brenna. Good defence. Chantal Stowers, one of the defenders in there. Samaima Taufa as well. Taufa opened the scoring last week. Millie Boyle. Options here for Lavinia Goulds. High pass was taken there by Racine McGregor, and here is Amber Hall. Another one of the forwards that found the try line in week one of NRLW. McGregor with the kick. Stowers does well here to clean up the Roosters. Well, there you can see where the Broncos consider their strength is, and that's in their, their middle forwards. They had a set of six there on the back of the penalty, and it did not go to a, a backline member through the whole set of six until there was a kick on the last, and a wayward pass from Dummy Harp. Roosters is under all sorts of pressure. Might get a restart here under the posts. Terrible mistake for the Roosters here. Keeping the pressure right on them. Tell you what, still though, they were fortunate there, the Roosters, that Isabel Kelly was awake to this loose pass. She was the first one onto it. Rowan Sims was out in front of her. Isabel Kelly doing the cleaning up work there, Joe. Yeah, it looks like there was a miscommunication between running there, but it's not a very good field position to um, give the ball away so early in the half. And you watch the Broncos, they'll just get a lot of confidence from this so early in the match. All behind! Well, here comes the dropout. And here's Zahara Tamara with the dropout. Didn't get all that much distance on it. So they've got some defending to do here. The Roosters in the opening exchanges. Gould, they go down a short side. Here's Amber Pilly. Good defence on Pilly. Alicia Harden making the tackle, the former Bronco. Amber Hall. Good defence there, Samima Taufa. Talisha Harden. Now, Taufa, she's in a bit of agony here, coming out of this tackle, holding her forearm. 
haven't got anything else, Clarky. A bit of concern here for Samima Taufa. She hit her head. I think she might have. She's grabbed her wrist, but... Yeah, she led forward there with the, the left arm. And then some heavy contact. But I think you're right, Joe. I think they're more concerned about... Around the head. Oh, yeah. Around yeah. the nose. I love the way, Pooty, you can put degrees of, of agony. Only in a bit of agony, not in... <laughs> not in a lot of agony. A lot of agony. <laughs> In a bit of pain. Yeah. Well, I, think it takes a lot to, I think it takes a lot to hurt some Mima It does. Yeah, it right. does. She's okay. And a nice little break here for the Roosters, albeit through injury. But they've got a chance now to, to reset their defence. And they've had to do three sets in a row. Halfway through the count on this occasion. So some running repairs here for Amber Hall. After that head clash so Brisbane will be able to recommence the tackle count here they're halfway through the set it's been all Brisbane the opening okay. exchanges the there, Make sure the up there. eventually we'll be right to go Amber will be itching to get back out there she scored an amazing try last week actually oh, 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 she ran a nine off the off the hooker and um, she's pretty dangerous that close to the try line actually. Still saw the head clash there. We'll go out the back. Yeah, just go out the go back. Out from yeah. Hall. Go out the back. We'll get someone else to play the ball. Time to go back out the back so we'll have to substitute. Play the ball person. Yep. Yep. Tackle four now for the Broncos. Yeah, we can finally play on here. Tasman Gray will be the person to play the ball. Oh, okay. To Lavinia Gould, they go to Racine McGregor, Rona Peters, Ali Brigginshaw, Amy Turner, the Olympic gold medalist. Good defence on her, Miss Poliaki, one on one. Here goes Gould, now Millie Boyle, a couple of metres away from the line. Last tackle here for Brisbane. Gould, Brigginshaw holds up the pass for Brand that gets over the line. Annette Brandner to open the scoring this afternoon at Amy Park. Well, the Broncos able to turn pressure into points and she hasn't had many touches so far, Ali Brigginshaw, but this is a beauty on the last. Just watch the way she holds the ball up here to commit the defence. Come down the left-hand side. She doesn't throw straight, holds it. Little double pump there. Waits for her edge forward to get into the, into the hole and puts it right on the chest for the opening points. Lovely pass there, committing the outside defender and getting the try scorer through two defenders. Alana. It's something that Ali Brigginshaw does very well is she's always got it set up and plenty of players running at the line with her. So there's always multiple options, but she's chosen the perfect the perfect option for this try and also to suit the conditions. There's been a lot of rain here in Melbourne today. So whilst it's not raining at this point, you can see her choosing the short pass here to Annette Brander to get over. Uh, whilst it's not raining right now, it's very wet out there on the field. So I expect to see their passes shorten up. She's still got the options, so the defence is still guessing. And the kicking game is going to be crucial as well. Great to see a combination, too, of two Queensland players. So Ali and Annette have played a lot of rugby league together over the years, and, and that's not unusual to see them combine there. So really great to see Annette get over for a first try in the Broncos jersey. You talk about great players. And the two things they have is time and space. Every time Ali Brinshaw touches a football, she appears to have an abundance of both. Chelsea Baker with the kicking duties for the Broncos, and her first attempt no way. is unsuccessful. 4 0 Brisbane. Away. First blood to the Broncos. And it was Annette Brandner scoring a try. It has been a mainstay of plenty of representative teams, Queensland and Australia. Samaya Taufa coming from the fields. 
So Caitlin Johnston, her replacement. It is an HIA replacement. And here's a mistake from the Broncos. So the Roosters with an opportunity now. Boy, did they need that. I can't remember the last time the Roosters touched the football apart from kicking it out from under their own posts or restarting. So they needed the momentum to turn, and, and it has. See here a an error in the play of the ball. Great opportunity now for the Roosters. Heads in. Heads in. 92% possession Hold. early on for the Broncos. The Roosters hit to go down a short side here through Corbin McGregor. Well, they could have bit some joy on their edges. Pete, Harden and Southall. Strong runners on the edge. If they can get into good position, bring them to the outside in run. Go down the short side on this occasion. They do through Simone Smith. Plenty of injuries in the last few years for Simone Smith. Good to see her at NRLW level. Is Rowan Sims passing to Johnston. Ten metres away from the line. Good heavy defence there from the Broncos. No surprise to see Rona Peters leading the way. Maynard the dummy half. Here's Sahara Tamara. Oh, Corbin McGregor's put it down. And now the Broncos can turn defence into attack very quickly. On this occasion, through Amy Turner. Just when it looked like the Roosters were building, it all came unstuck for them. First touch there, too, for Julia Robinson. Excited to see her back. She's one of my favourite players in last year's competition. Very strong on that left leg. They overcome that. Really bad double break of the leg earlier in the season. And they are strengthened on this left-hand side by her presence. They go the other way. Two damaging wingers for Brisbane. We've got Robinson on one side and Meg Ward on the other. Both great finishes. Peters passing on this occasion is Brigham Shaw. That kick charged down. Baker's got it, knocked it back. Play on here for Brisbane. And a fresh set of six for them as well. Lux of fortune for the Broncos early on. Rona Peters, hard and strong, up the centre. 29 away, more defending to do for the Roosters. McGregor is grey. They're holding firm at the moment. Now, straight through, they go through Uba Pili. Wow! She did it all on her own. Amber Pilly scoring the Broncos' second try of the afternoon. All too easy for the Broncos' centre. Well, they'll all be cheering up at the Gold Coast. The Burley Bears is where Amber plays her club footy. She came through the system, got picked up in the last minute last year, played in the centres for the Broncos in the grand final win. Played her first game for Queensland this year and given an opportunity, look what she turns it into. Four points for the Bronx. This is impressive. You see that the dummy half going across as she did last week was only the one marker there and Pilly with some footwork and speed was able to come back on the inside into a hole, right foot step, left foot step, power through a tackle through the fullback and under the posts. And that comes on the back of a charge down on the kicks. You, you won't see many NRL players do that these days. It tends up counterproductive as it was on that occasion, Alana. Yes, Stella, and absolutely no surprise that Lavinia Gould set up that little play from in and around the ruck. She's a very smart player, but Amber Pilly, a very strong and solid runner of the ball. The Roosters can't afford to have flat feet in defence. They're going to need to get up and apply some pressure to hold them out from their line. Well, Amber Pilly scoring the try, played in the grand final last year, represented Queensland for the first time in 2019. Here's a much simpler task for... Chelsea Baker from right in front. And she's successful. 10 0 Brisbane.
on. Stay behind. A point a minute for Brisbane early on. Roosters with a lot of work to do. Brisbane in a move this afternoon, dominating early. Well, they need some football, the Roosters. They need to control it and get down the other end of the field. They've just been defending this whole period of time, 20 minutes. They've had very, very little with the football. Rona Peters now has been strong laying a platform. Well, 10 minutes, to them it would feel like 20. Yeah. I bet I hope it doesn't last for 20 minutes. Here's Racy McGregor. If you look at the Roosters lineup, they've actually got more representative Kiwi Ferns and, Ferns and Dillaroos than the Broncos do. And the forward pack's outstanding. You've got basically an all-Australian forward pack for the Roosters with a Kiwi Fern at hooker. So much like we've seen, if they can get the ball, they'll be dangerous. They've got Corbin McGregor in a fast back line, but you can't score points if you don't have the ball. Well, they need to get through this set. That's an understatement. And that's strong defence from the Broncos. Peters in there. Amber Hall was there as well. Stinging Brisbane defence early. The Roosters struggling to get out of their own half. Simone Smith held it up beautifully there for Karina Brown. It was well read out wide by Meg Ward. Another loose pass. Sahara Tamara picked it up. Here's Caitlin Johnson, the youngster. Last tackle here for the Roosters. They need a good kick. Sahara Tamara gave herself a bit of room. There was placed under a heap of pressure. And they've turned it over here. And she's in some trouble too, Tamara. Uh, Tamara, sorry. She stayed down after that missed kick. She's got that right knee heavily strapped already. Awkwardly there as she went down, under placed under a heap of pressure. Yeah, Millie Boyle coming in there and just gets contact and she's in some some trouble out there. She's she's very distressed. Yeah, that's really bad news. I hope she's okay. She's only just come back from injury herself this season and missed um, representative football earlier in the year and has been so patient, um, getting herself ready. Um, for this season and um, yeah hopefully this isn't anything too serious. Well I'd imagine Kira did will come into the game very shortly this this looks like an injury that might force her out of the game it is, especially the fact that she's got that knee heavily strapped going into the match you know that it's been a problem area for her and she's a tough customer Zahara Tamara Takes a lot for her to stay down, so we know this is a serious one. Well, this is, seems to be down the leg. This is more down the, the ankle area. In the hands of the Roosters trainers. No surprises too, Joe, to see a couple of her Burley Bears teammates go straight over to her, That part of this Broncos team as well too when she went down. Did, sell, did really well initially to give herself some room to try to get the kick away under a mountain of pressure. And then yeah. it was Millie Boyle who came through. Who's her teammate usually up yeah. at the Bears and Amber Pilly, so. She's up and okay. And organising them by the looks, which is fantastic to see. Although Kira Dibby is coming to the sideline now. She will be replaced. Oh, yeah. Thought for a moment there she was going to stay yes. out there. Well, they're in trouble, the Roosters. I know this is early in the game, but they need to be really careful if this scoreline doesn't get away on them. They've had little football. They've thrown two wayward passes from dummy half. They failed to get a kick away on the last. And they're just not really giving themselves a chance to get it back into this game at the moment. So, they've lost now two experienced players. Samaya Taufa from the field. And now Zahara Tamara. Now they've got defending to do, the Roosters. Brisbane here, right at the start of the set of six. That's solid contact. Rowan Sims, Vanessa Foliaki in there, along with Caitlin Johnson as well, the three of them. On Amber Hall. Here's Millie Boyle. Oh, good tackle, Caitlin Johnston. Bone Rattler. Gould's 
They go to the right. Peters, little dummy, then takes the line on herself. Two tackles left in the set here. Brisbane leading 10-0, looking for more points. Here's Amber Pilly. This time they wrap her up. Good quick play. The ball, in fact, it was too quick. And now a mistake from Isabel Kelly. She did the initial job perfectly, but then knocked the ball on. Well, the Broncos could have really been in trouble there. They're, they're lucky, and and um, they're lucky that Isabel made that mistake because she was ready, and they just weren't organised. So frustrating for the Roosters. It's a bit embarrassing when your dummy half is looking out at the first receiver and the ball is played in front, and Kelly saw that happening. And unfortunately, in picking it up, contact was made and drops it. I'm getting a sore neck just watching down the left side of this field. That's not just me. Here's Ali Brigginsaw. Goes to Chelsea Baker. Puts on a step, Baker. They eventually wrap her up. Lavinia Gould. Not back, was it? Yes, play on here for Brisbane. Now Brigginsaw goes short to boil on this occasion. So she's been a tested boil in the opening exchanges. Very good last week as well. Here's Brigginsaw putting on a step. Not falling for. Good defence once again here. Hannah Southwell with a good tackle. Now Goulds gets a pass away. They'll do well again to hold on the Roosters. And they stop Amber Hall on that occasion. Now Gould goes on the run and will score the try. No, she won't. Double, Double movement. movement. She advanced the ball. Well, that might just be the turning point. You really couldn't afford to concede points on that occasion. And yes, you can see the, the movement, the second movement of the right arm of Gould. Just couldn't contain herself. It's tempting when you're that close to the line, I suppose, but hopefully now the Roosters can turn this around and, and hold it for at least this set of six and get some better field position. Alana, down to you. I've just got a quick injury update for you. Bad news is that Zahara Tamara, she's getting her right ankle checked out with the doctor at the moment, but excellent news for the Roosters. Their lock, Samaima Taufa, has passed her HIA and she's cleared to come back on in the next four minutes. So that's a big boost for their side. Well, that's massive. To have someone of not only her ability, her leadership as well too, Joe, that to know that Samaima Taufa will be okay to come back on the field. Oh, look, the girls will be driven to do their best without her on there, but there's no doubt, Peter, that once she's on the field, she lifts, she leads with that, by example. And her experience with that forward pack is what they need to combat the Broncos forwards. Oh, sloppy play the ball there from Caitlin Johnson. They've turned it over here. It was very late in the tackle count. That was last tackle, and Kira Dib was nice and deep and ready to get a... A long kick downfield, unfortunately, it didn't get to her hands. I don't think they would have had more than two or three play the balls in the opposition 20, the Roosters. They had that one set, didn't they, early on in the game, and that was about it. Now, the NRLW continues tomorrow as the Warriors host the Dragons in New Zealand. Now, coverage begins from 1 o'clock on 9 tomorrow. We look forward to that one. Tomorrow afternoon. The Broncos with a mistake here. Oh, penalty. There's a hand on there. We're under more pressure now, the Roosters. As Racy McGregor will shoot for touch. Yeah, I was really getting the impression there that the Roosters were holding the line really well. Earlier it was broken, which the Broncos were exploiting, but. Um, they're going to have to hold on for another set of six now and hopefully turn the ball over. Driving 10 0. Steph Hancock. What a run from the veteran. Charging up the middle. Fighting for every inch. Now Gould on the back of it. Showing. Now going to Amber Pilly. Caitlin Johnson with a good tackle. Need a Maynard in there as well. Good, got good hands. Tasman Gray. In the damp conditions. Gould. McGregor. Hancock. 
It's Alicia Harden, met her front on. Johnston in there, Sims as well. Gould, McGregor. On the ground! No one to pass it to, on the took the line on. Good defence for Roosters. Last tackle here for Brisbane. Looping pass to Brigginshaw, puts in a little grubber kick, it's fumbled, and then eventually battered dead by Corbin McGregor. Repeat set coming for Brisbane. Tell you what I really like about the halves combination at the Broncos is we've watched Ali Brigginshaw for years and she's played half right up to Dillaroo's World Cup winning halfback, but with Racy McGregor in there, I think that takes the pressure off Ali and she doesn't have to overly think every attacking set and it allows her to do things, and she can do this anyway, but probably gives her a bit of freedom to run the left side the way she likes. This is perfect with the football, isn't it? They're just concentrating on the middle corridor and they're bringing their outside backs back through the middle. We saw Pilly score a try already there. They're not going to the extremities at all. They're just powering forward. They've had all the football and here we go again. Hancock, another carry. A strong run as well. they got numbers. If they want to go out wide and here's Brandner. Loses the ball in good defence from the Roosters. So can they complete this set of six, the Roosters? They would love a penalty. However, 11 minutes left in the first half. Well, really, the way the game's gone, it was 10 nil after 10 minutes. 10 not bad. No, exactly. Good run, Karina Brown. Almost a penalty there. He's near to Maynard. Tackle four. And they're kicking here on the fourth. Meg Ward just traps it. Little fumble. Went backwards, though. So the Broncos... Probably about only the second time this afternoon have to work the ball out of their own end, Joe. Yeah, look, they have had a pretty good um, run of luck in a few areas, but I'm actually a bit surprised at the errors on both sides. Just all huge fumbles and missed times with the passing, but I guess that comes with teams that only come together about three weeks before the competition starts. And as the game goes on, they'll have to sharpen that up um, in order to get the win. Yeah, I think it's exemplified by conditions too, isn't it? And uh, they're not great out there at the moment. A bit of wind around and a little bit of sleep. Broncos now go again to their front rower. Boyle on the last tackle, centre field. Wills goes to McGregor this time on the last. And she puts a little grubber kick in. Smith gets back there and cleans it up here for the Roosters. And every time they have had possession, this is only their, their sixth set for the game. As we've talked before, they've completed one from five. I think every one of their sets has started inside their own team. Like this one. There's got to be a complaint going too. This Corey Parker, he's turning into the Alan Langer of trainers. He's dead set spending more time out there than some of the players. And we've got another injury here for the Roosters. It's like yeah. Isabel Kelly. Yeah, it is a key one. You mentioned Joe Isabel Kelly. They cannot lose her. She got up gingerly from that last, she did a decent hit up and in contact with Meg Ward, she played the ball and she just didn't look right. There's a fair bit of pain there. Kelly, here's a kick downfield, Robinson, knocks it backwards, now gets up, a staggered chase in front of her. That was until she ran into Samima Taufa. Well, Kelly's up on her feet and has been given the OK to the sideline from the trainer, so that's that's a real positive. Slowly making her way back into position on that left-hand side. Chelsea Baker goes to dummy half. Goes for a run into Roosters' territory. <laughs> Lavinia Goulds, sharp work this afternoon at dummy half. Here goes Steph Hancock again. And she carries four of them with her. Goulds, McGregor, Gray, Tasman Gray. Stopped 10 metres away from the line. Last tackle here for Brisbane. Ali Brigginshaw just held up a pass. 
Offload, knock on the changeover here for the okay, Roosters. Okay. They just hang on again. Draws, yeah, really good read here from Southwell, the number 12. Came in and jammed. Bruce, Regan Shaw again Bruce, looking Bruce, to what, yours, what yours. she was trying to Lines do when here. she set up the Lines first up try. Go to the line, hold the football up and sure find somebody on. short on the outside. But Southwell read it beautifully. Southwell's had a terrific game in defence. I know as a rooster today there's been plenty of it. Um, plenty of opportunity to defend, but she's been in some really crucial tackles that have made the difference. And um, yeah, she's a fantastic player and an up and comer. And I think the Roosters are really valuing her work ethic out there this afternoon. Here's a Liddy Namos in the first year of playing rugby league. Coming off the bench, Maynard. Good little skirt out of dummy half from her. Roosters players were calling for a penalty there. They thought it might have skipped up a little bit high. Karina Brown, well handled by the Broncos defence. Millie Boyle in there again. Here's a kick from Dib. Chelsea Baker thought about attacking it. Goes overhead, Takarangi flying out after with a little pressure on. Now it was knocked on by Baker. That was good work from Takarangi who was coming through, putting a lot of pressure on the Broncos fullback. Well, we've got six minutes to half time. If the Roosters can put Sammy on the board here, it would be a huge effort. It's been close to being offside here. Fullback touches it there. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I think Robinson's offside. I don't think she ever gets back behind the football. But they'll take that, right. the Roosters. Girls, heads in. 19-3. Play the ball in the opposition. Lights. 20. Out. Let's hope they can take some more up here in this set. Chantel Stowers here for the Roosters. It is pouring down. The rain has arrived after it was sunny earlier. It is Talisha Harden. Only tackle two here. Jemima Taufa. Scored a try down this end of the field last week against the Warriors. Wouldn't the Roosters love one down this end now before halftime? The Moss. Gets an offload away. Maynard. Kira Dibbs showing it. It's a beautiful pass to Southwell. She gets an equally good pass away, but it's well read by the Broncos defence. Good quick play the ball. Kira Dibbs puts a kick in, knocked on Brisbane. Six more tackles will it be? Yeah. They're going to play the double knock on. I, I, thought, gee, I thought she could have run it there, Dib. Great well, tackle from Brigginshaw that played it before on a front rower to save the day. Thought she really could have had a look on her outside. It was a two on one. Watch the halfback come in here and save the day. And then the next, well, here we go from the front on shot. That's good work from Ali Brigginshaw on Rebecca Young. Fresh set of six here for the Roosters. Dowers. Need to get this girl Kelly involved. Maynard goes to Namos. Tries to bury herself over the line. Stopped just a couple of metres short. Maynard. Becca Young does very well. Simone Smith under pressure puts it down. So the Broncos defence holding firm. They put plenty of pressure there on Simone Smith. We can see some frustrated Roosters players out there, but the wet weather's just going to change everything for all the both sides, I think, this afternoon. And the Broncos are off the hook again, but, you know, it's early days still. Yeah, that was a golden opportunity missed there. As we see, the brains trust of the Roosters. Rick Stone there on the right from the NRL coach. That was mid-tackle count and a tremendous opportunity to try and turn the tide. Now don't miss tonight's huge semi-final. If we get a penalty, as the Melbourne Storm face Parramatta Eels for a spot in next week's prelim. Our live coverage begins from 7 o'clock on Channel 9. Stella, you'll just be hoping for somewhat of a repeat of last Sunday, won't you? I'm not expecting that, Pete. I'm just looking for a really good showing where the better team wins. We'll cop a five-point win. It's not just going to be 58. Oh, some mouth-watering match-ups tonight. In fact, we'll take a one-point win. 
Gould. Hard running. Amy Turner got a little pass on the inside there. Even short. She did well there to hold it. Mariah Storch. Was tremendous last week off the bench in the warm conditions at Bankwest Stadium. Now Racy McGregor tries to catch the napping. Good tackle. Rebecca Young. Front foot, oh, that's on the front foot again through Chelsea Baker, but she's made a mistake in traffic. And Talisha Harden has it for the Roosters. Yeah, Talisha Harden had a fantastic game for the Roosters last week, just missed scoring a try. I think she's one of the best they had, and she's going really well in the second row. She was in the Broncos last year, but she's really one of the leaders, I think, out there for the Roosters in the last two weeks, and um, she's working hard again this afternoon. Well, we've got the Melbourne Storm who have arrived. Ryan Pappenhausen, you saw on the screen. Oh, and another mistake in the play. The ball here from the Roosters. This time, Samaya Taufa, the offender. Well, this is a huge minute coming up here until the break. Yeah, she just loses that cold. No cause for complaint there. 10-0 acceptable for the Roosters after what they've endured the first half. 14 or 16 would be much more of a mountain to climb. So Brisbane to feed this scrum. 45 seconds left in the half. They look to put a play on straight away. Here's Ali Brigginshaw. Goes to Amy Turner. So strong is Turner. Always fighting in the tackles. Lavinia Gould goes short to Rona Peters. 20 seconds left before the break. Mariah Storch, good tackle. The Moss in there. Before she had a bit of help. Salisha Harden as well. And a penalty, Brisbane. On the head. Yeah, she was all over. It That's seemed to be like she was all over her face. Will they elect to take the two here, Where Brisbane? Now, well, they've asked the fullback and I think she's declined, so okay. they're going to have one play. Marks the alley. Talisha. What are we doing? Sure we're match. The oh, no. They are going to have a shot now. So they will have a shot at penalty goal through Chelsea Baker. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't their first option, Pete. They. They were going to go for more than that, but basically when they came to only seconds left, they thought, well, why not? You've seen a lot of her kick, Joe. Will she have the, the distance here? Yeah, look, I think she played soccer when she was younger. She's she's done really well as a goal kicker. I'd love to see Steph Hancock take it, because I know Steph's got the, I know for sure she's got the distance. Um, but you know, Chelsea's the number one goal kicker for a reason, so. So that little high five that we saw just a minute ago from Steph Hancock yeah. to Chelsea Baker, that wasn't do your best, that was I should take it. Oh, I'd know. Steph would never say that. I just <laughs> think it'd be good if the old, you know, one of the older, older, most experienced rather than oldest players on the field, who's been around for years, gave it a crack. But Chelsea will be fine. If she doesn't kick it dead, don't forget, the Roosters can have a bit of a, a crack themselves. And it's just waved like. away, and the Roosters have it here. They wouldn't want to clock off here. Brisbane, McGregor goes to Karina Brown. And they corral Brown, tackle her, and that will be half-time. A half-time where Brisbane have dominated for the 30 minutes. But they're leading only by 10 points to nil. It was 10 nil after 10 minutes. The Roosters have done well in the 20 ensuring minutes to make sure that their line wasn't cracked. Just about ready for second half action here at Amy Park, week two of NRLW. Brisbane in complete control during the first 30 minutes, leading by 10 points to nil, and here's an early mistake from the Roosters from the kickoff, so they'll be under pressure right from the outset here in the second half. Did so well in the latter stage of the first half, limiting the score to just 10 points against them. And now they'll do well to hold Brisbane out in the wet conditions. You can see the rain teeming down. What an opportunity this is for Brisbane. Yeah, terrible bounce here. The last one for Kiana Takarangi. 
Hold. Ball in. Out. Brisbane feed the scrum and win it. Here's Amy Turner. Probing all afternoon. Lavinia Goulds. Here's Racine McGregor. Five away from the line. Good defence. Rebecca Young. Nita Maynard in there as well. Gould goes flat to Storch. That's a good tackle. Namos. Stopped her in her tracks. Gould goes to Steph Hancock. Wouldn't she love a try? Still going Hancock. Fighting in the tackle. There were four of them in there again. Now Gould goes to Peters. Gets herself over the line. Rona Peters. Brisbane score first in the second half. Well, fantastic try to Rona Peters. And the thing is, you'd think strategically they were trying to just suck in all the defenders and then maybe get the ball out wide, but they didn't actually need to do that. And it hurts when you're defending and the opposition gets in under the posts. They were just going through the front door, weren't they? Just trying to knock it down. They, they had four attempts in a row, just mm. forwards taking the defence on. And finally, they get one on one. Crashing across Alana Ferguson to, to get a very important early second half try. It sure was. And through Rona Peters, who's so strong through the middle, but they started the second half just how they finished the first. Very strong, the Broncos. I think for me, the Roosters to get back into this game, when Kira Dibb came onto the field, her kicking game made a big difference. So that could be one way to play to the conditions and apply a little bit of pressure to these Broncos girls. You can't afford to knock the kick on off. You just... And that was a terrible start. They could have had the football for the second half and had a nice set, got a kick and be down the other end on, on the attack or looking to force an error down the other end. Now they've conceded six and it's a big lead, or about to be six. 16-0 Brisbane. It was a difficult task for the Roosters as we kicked off the second half, and that's been made even harder with that early try for Brisbane to open the second period. Rona Peters with the try. Yeah, the right thoughts. Throws herself with every hit up she takes into the opposition defence. Tasman Gray. Goulds goes to Hancock. Well, they, they threatened to force Steph Hancock back then, Joe, but she eventually just twisted and made another three or four metres. And got a penalty by the looks, I think. No, told to go back and play it. Got tackle four, push up for me, Mark. Well, back, back. Wait, 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 wait. Your options Mark, with Steph on. are you've all got to get in on her and try and get her down. And that's in itself a pretty tough task because she's big and strong and fast. But if you in you, Focus too much on trying to get it to the ground, she'll get an offload and they'll get second phase play. So she's an absolute handful. Good chase there from the fourth tackle kick from Ali Brigginshaw. They need something here, the Roosters. It'll be a penalty, someone to produce some second phase play. Oh, little bobble, and here is a penalty. The thing is with this Rooster side, they've got the skill and they've got the speed in their back line. If they can just get a break in plan, they've got 16 or more points in them in this half. And Kira Dib, I mean, it was a shame that Sahara went off injured in the first half, but Kira Dib's whole body language, even when she jogged back before when the Broncos scored, I think if someone can turn it around for the Roosters, she can lead that turnaround. They start the set of six inside Brisbane's territory. A rarity for the Roosters. Maynard, Rebecca Young, solid tackle on Young. Peters and Hancock on that occasion. Namos puts on a little step and tries to 
get through a strong run from the interchange forward. Maynard. Here's Samaima Taufa. 13 away. Smith puts in a little kick. It's off legs. Picked up here by the Broncos. So, Gracie McGregor has it. Yeah, late decision to kick the football there. And up until that stage, it was probably their best set they put together. But again, handed the football over fairly meekly at the end of it without maintaining pressure. But Kelly's got another problem here. The centre for the Roosters, down receiving attention on this side of the field. I'll stop play for Isabel Kelly, who went down injured in the first half. She might have got a poke in the eye here. I'm assuming in this weather there are no fireworks out there, Pete, I think. You can see in that slow motion she's got hit in the face, I think, by Tasman Gray. Obviously not intentional, but... Joe, I guess the other aspect of this game is if the Roosters can't stage a, a huge second-half comeback as we have a look at... Yeah, it just catches the... The accidental contact there from Tasman Gray is the scoreline. If we remember back last year, the the Roosters made the grand final on the back of differential. Yeah, that's right. So they've got to make sure that, like I say, if they don't stage a big second half recovery, that they the scoreline doesn't blow out. Exactly right. That's right, because they, they didn't start the competition well last year, but they got themselves through and they got themselves into a grand final. So all is not lost today, but you're so right. They do need those points. All right, girls, just take a step back here with me. Just make sure you now, the don't on. miss tonight's huge semi-final as the Melbourne Storm face Parramatta Eels for a right, spot girls, in next Shot week's up, prelim. The shot of at the Eels. Our coverage begins from oh. 7 o'clock on Channel 9. As it's play on here for... The Broncos. Ooh, there's a mistake from Brisbane and now the Roosters. With some good field position. Plus for the Roosters, Isabel Kelly able to continue. And there is still so much time for the Roosters to get themselves right back into this game. They just need to be patient. Forget the scoreboard pressure. Just get their game in order. Namos. Maynard goes on her own and slips the pass there to Taufa. Maynard is Kira Dib passing before the line on this occasion. Southwell, good tackle. Annette Brandner in there on Hannah Southwell. Oh, and a mistake again here from the Roosters. Starting to build in these sets of six. Just put the ball down on the arm of Annette Brandon there, Hannah Southwell. Well, when you're in that moment and it's not in, in, slow, in slow motion, it would feel like Annette interrupted that because you're fighting to get the quick play of the ball. She's fighting to get up first at marker. But when you look at it in slow motion, she didn't actually interfere there. In these conditions, you've got to forsake a little bit of speed for technique. You can't get up cradling the football in one arm as she did there. The responsibility is on you as the Broncos go right, right on, a, on a rare occasion. And if you look to the Broncos, I think it won't be long before Chelsea Leonard Doozy comes on. This is her first game this season. She's come back from injury. Um, and I think in the last 12 months since she played for the Broncos, she's really matured as a leading forward. Um, and I'm looking forward to how she injects herself into the game this afternoon. And she's out on the field now, Chelsea Leonard Doozy. And here's her first hit up of the game. Always improving is Chelsea Lenarduzzi. Brigginshaw, good hands from Brigginshaw and a good short ball as well, but the Roosters defence through the Moss read it well. Annette Brander on that occasion. Low trajectory kick there from Racine McGregor. Well handled there by Takarangi. Oh, the Roosters trailing by 16. 
good defence here. Brisbane, Rona Peters again, along with Lavinia Gould. Here's Karina Brown. Net Brander with a good one-on-one -on -one tackle. Jillaroo on Jillaroo on that occasion. Here's Isabel Kelly. Been in the wars this afternoon. Treatment the first half for a leg injury. Treatment this half for a poke in the eye. Well, that's good work there from the Roosters. Their outside backs all came in and had a carry. They get Dib in a good position down the right-hand side. Puts up the high kick. It's juggled by Robinson. Fortunately for her and her team, it went backwards. A good chase here too from the Roosters. And talking about players coming off the bench, the Roosters have just had Foliaki come back into the front row. And we saw last week she's got damaging defence and she'll be itching to get there and, and get up in the faces of the Broncos' attacking line. Gray. Ten short of halfway here for Brisbane. Meg Ward, an angled run. A good tackle. That Maynard in underneath. It was. Good shot there on Meg Ward. Cut out pass and a beautiful pass to Turner from Brigginshaw. Here's Robinson in open spaces. Tries to get away from Dib. Eventually, the tackle was made by Corbin McGregor. On the front foot here, Brisbane. Brigginshaw, little tip over the top. Can she get the bounce? She can. And then rolls over, puts the ball down. Ali Brigginshaw. Well, she started this and finished it. A brilliant pass in the okay, lead-up play to Stowers. I've got tackle six. I've got a try. Right, on the outside of Stowers, I'm sorry, who she saw defensively come up out of the line and threw the face pass across. And then a tackle later puts the chip kick on. The Roosters get a terrible bounce. The halfback regathers, is claimed. But you think she'll get the football down right at the end here. Right there. Ali Brigginshaw for the Broncos regains her own kick and maintains possession and grounds the ball in the end goal. We have a decision. But she set the play up previously with a, a lovely pass to put the side away down that left-hand side. Caught the centre out. And then she just finished it off in style. Well, it's great to see Ali Brigginshaw back in the form that we have come to learn, learn so well and observe so much from her. She had a bit of a nightmare run in the State of Origin lead up and the day the Queensland team flew out, she was injured and she still played, but I know she's been looking for that form that we've just seen this afternoon. She actually looked like she'd been a little bit injured as she um, got off the ground slowly there, but she can't be too bad because she's back in with the team. Yes, she did very well there, Ali Brigginshaw, Alana. Yeah, we just saw the lead-up play. Julia Robinson have that run out wide, which got the Broncos the momentum for Ali Brigginshaw to polish it off. I think that's what they're doing well, the Broncos girls. They're not just attracting that A defender. They're able to spread it out a little bit wider and get the attention from more than one of the Roosters' defence. So well done from the Broncos' smart football. And as we've seen plenty of times now, Ali Brigginshaw polishing it off very well to get the points. Did you know a dad, Pete? Larry? Yeah, Larry Brigginshaw, a, a very prominent fixture in Brisbane Rugby League circles. Very good footballer as well, too. Yeah, played for his state. Mm. Yeah, good footballer, Larry Brigginshaw. Runs in the family as well. Chelsea Baker, unsuccessful. Under 20 minutes remaining, Brisbane they led 10 0 at half time, and it's almost been a replica of the first half because Brisbane led 10 0 after 10 minutes, and it's got 10 points in the opening 11 minutes of the second half. Leading by 20 points to nil. In this shortened competition of NRLW, Sterling made the point before about. For and against can be so important. Oh, 
Yeah, well, as I mentioned, I'm pretty sure there were three sides last year that all had the win each, and it came down to the superior for and against. And that was good enough to get them through to the grand final. But beyond the eight ball mounds, it's not been consecutive losses, driving defence there. And they'll be in a position where they have to rely on other results, and you don't want that to be the case. Here's the last. Gave herself some more time there too. That was outstanding. Here's a mistake from Corbin McGregor. Good kick there from Ali Brigginshaw. Knock on roosters. Oh, that's awful for Corbin McGregor. She hasn't had a lot of ball today. And even, that, even though Ali just scored then, she'd covered defended quite well. And she'll be disappointed with that. But I guess in this weather, anything could happen. Despite that drop, Alana, have the conditions improved the touch? Yeah, well, the rain stopped coming down. So for, for the time being, there's no rain actually pouring down. But the field, it's very heavy and very wet. So any time the ball touches the surface, which is every time they play it, it's going to be very slippery. Backline set here for the Broncos, but they go down a short side through Aiken. That's just one you, what you want when you're trailing by 20. The zippy Taron Aiken comes onto the field. And that Brandner. Been strong this afternoon. Leonard Doozy. Chelsea Leonard Doozy. Forced back. Oh, what an offload. And here go Brisbane again through Amber Hall. Just short of the line. Good defence. Good offload. Chelsea Leonard Doozy. Now Aiken goes short on this occasion. The Roosters defence. Holding firm. Stopping Mariah Storch. Now Racy McGregor kicks from the outside of the boot. And a mistake there from Karina Brown, so Brisbane will get the scrum feed. Well, it's interesting in these conditions because you can see a lot of the time earlier in the set, the Broncos are just going one up. They're doing simple things so they don't make mistakes and they take a risk with the kick. And every time at the moment, the Roosters are turning it back over to them. And she shouted Karina Brown. She did a really good job to get there. She was involved in the tackle from the offload the previous play and realised that that left the side short down that side so she scooted out there was in position for the kick and out it came you'd think that they'd be hard pressed to hold out the broncos now mcgregor off the back of the scrum goes to ali brigginshaw here's aiken room to move here for taron aiken the defense there from the roosters baker brigginshaw leonard doozy Now Aiken, the dummy half. Brigginshaw, McGregor, Amber Hall. Again, in search of the line. Aiken. Here's McGregor. Goes here to Amber Pilly. Scored a magnificent try in the first half. Driven back on that occasion by Ness Poliarki. Who's got up injured. Amber Hall again. Nita Maynard with a good tackle. There's Sahara Tamara back out on the field. Aiken, McGregor, Brigginshaw, little kick for the corner. Too strong. Julia Robinson is flying out after it. And the Roosters do well on that occasion to hold the Broncos out, Jay Barrett. Well, here they go. They're, they're heading up the field now. I'd, and I'd hope for the Roosters they can, can get some ground here because they've had an awful run. I see Ruan Sims is coming back on now. Um, so if their forwards can just get them in good field position, if they can try the whole kick and chase, it seems to be working for the Broncos, they might just get some luck as well. He's got players with the skill to, to do it. Then on the back foot right from the outset. He's Maynard. It's Alicia Harden. Good defence, Chelsea Lenarduzzi. Maynard takes off out of dummy half. Tries to catch a couple of the Broncos defenders napping, but they were alert to the Zippy Roosters number nine. Brown, Dib, Southwell. Trying to put on a little bit of a step. Good tackle Annette Brandner. Here's Zahara Tamara with a kick. Attack there by Meg Ward, who does very well, then breaks through, and the attack 
tackle yeah. made yeah. just when it looked like Med Meg Ward was going to be off and gone. A good tackle there by Corbin McGregor. Amber Pilly now. All the Broncos in this first NRLW class of round two. Strong defence, Hannah Southwell. Oh, Hannah Southwell has been so impressive in defence and attack all day. She's athletic and strong and she just keeps competing for the Roosters. Very impressive. Chelsea Lenarduzzi now. Taryn Aiken, Gracie McGregor. Dummy her inside, took the line on. Now Brigginshaw, grab a kick, off legs. Now Brisbane, they've just made a change. Billy Boyle has just come on the field here. It wasn't played at by the Roosters. It'll be a changeover. She was just coming on the field, little prop in the background. Now here goes Isabel Kelly. Strong run from Kelly. Isabel Kelly, as we've mentioned, hasn't stopped trying all afternoon. 12 minutes left. Brisbane leading by 20 points to nil. Marina Brown tries to search for a hole in that Broncos defensive line, but there's been none there all afternoon. Maynard goes short to Sims. Luan Sims. Three of them in the tackle. Quick play the ball by Ruan. In fact, there was a hand there. Go ten, go ten. Go ten, go ten. They take the tap here through Maynard. Goes to Zahara Tamara. Great boost for the Roosters that she's able to be out there. Now Dib gets a pass away to Foliaki. Tackle net brand a one-on-one -on -one with Vanessa Foliaki. Maynard, Dib. Hannah Southwell, if any of the Roosters deserve a try, it is their back rower. And arguably their best this afternoon. Right. This evening Anchor. is Maynard drifting across field. Yeah, penalty. She, she took advantage of the, the obstruction. The decoy went through, and if she'd have just stopped and run into the defence, she'd have been OK. But she takes the advantage. See, in behind the front rower there, continues across. And once she is deemed to take an advantage, it becomes an obstruction. You cannot run behind your own player. A penalty Brisbane and they find the line. Joe, with such a turnover of players for the Brisbane side this year, the reigning premiers, did you see them being as strong as the way they've started this second competition? On paper, no, they um, probably didn't look as flashy as the Dragons and the Roosters, to be honest with you, Peter, but um, I know quite a few of the girls, and, and the term, in terms of their culture as a team, I had a lot of confidence in how they gelled and how they got together, and I've had a bit of time talking to their coach, Kelvin Wright, and they're such a positive, upbeat group. And more than anything, they actually maintained 13 players on their roster. So there's a fair chunk, while they lost a lot of players, there's a fair chunk of players that have been around for a season where they haven't been beaten. That's got to be advantageous. Great shot again there from Southall. She's, she's been a standout for the Roosters. The rain looks like it's starting to kick in once again. Amy Turner always looks busy when she's got the, the ball in hand, Turner. Brigginshaw just gives herself some room again and has a shot at a 40-20, but Corbin McGregor does very well on that occasion. Of course, in NRLW, it's a 40-30, but that was destined to be a 40-20 a from Ali Brigginshaw. Karina Brown. Good run from the Rooster Swinger to you, Alana. Just from down here at ground level, it seems a little bit too obvious for me that the Roosters are just playing one-out football. We saw Corb McGregor and then Karina Brown have some great runs and great metres, but they've got no support there in attack. I think they'll go over the video from this game and it'll be blaringly obvious that they need to use the football a little bit and engage some more defenders to ask questions because at the moment, when they do make momentum, they have no one there to support them and break through that line. Liz, Hannah Southwell... She's to her feet, she's re receiving some treatment from the trainer. Just picking up on that point that Alana made, 
Joe, there have been occasions where Karina Brown's threatened Corbin McGregor, Isabel Kelly, but there's been no one running up with them in support. That's right. I totally agree with that. And they've got the pace. I've said it um, this afternoon. The Roosters' back one's unbelievable. You know, it was a four by one they got right, but they need to support each other um, in that unpredictable second phase play. What's well, she must have got the tackle count wrong, Kelly. That was the fourth tackle. Amber Hall, get a run. And reacted as though, uh oh, it's the last tackle. I've got to get one away. It wasn't a bad one in the end, but it's not what the Roosters wanted. It's just eight minutes left. We're at Amy Park. The Broncos destined to make it two from two to start off their title defence. In NRLW2 is Aiken. Taryn Aiken. Pushed off the bench this afternoon. Tasman Gray on that occasion. Penalty coming to Brisbane. Oh, wow. Getting right at the end of the tackle Brendan count. Here. Rooster player was ruled to have. Struck out with the foot to interfere with the play of the ball. I think it's Ruan Sims. No, well, she's just getting back to mark. Yeah, she's That's a really tough call. She was just trying to get out of the road. When you're 20 nil <laughs> down, boy, you don't want them going against you. That's a one, considering we saw we ruled a mistake uh, a few minutes prior. Here's another penalty here. She's held. And Racy McGregor. It was a good run from she's McGregor. Off. She's not a bad off. way here, Racy McGregor. Yeah, another penalty, this time for a strip. Lovely little pass again on the edge. Well, neck. She's grabbing a neck. She just fell awkwardly there as she rolled onto her, her neck, and she's holding that neck collarbone region. I thought the leg got caught as well, too, through all of that. But there's the... Racine McGregor receiving treatment. Alana, after what we've seen so far, what are you most impressed with? The, the 20 or the zero in regards to the Broncos? Uh, definitely the zero for the Broncos because they've been very dominant uh, in the style of football that they're playing. I think they're really strong through the middle in both attack and defence and they're basing their game off that. They've got good go forward, they're winning those rucks, but then to hold the other team out. And the Roosters, they've got some strike weapons out there. They haven't necessarily been able to involve them um, as best as possible because Isabel Kelly with space, she's unbelievable, but they haven't had good ball and good position on the field to necessarily use them as best as possible. But the Broncos haven't allowed them to. And I think that's through them being so strong through the middle, sticking to their game plan. And then Ali Brigginshaw just controlling the kicking game and steering them around the field at the end of those sets. So definitely keeping the others, uh, the Roosters to zero, but just the style of football that they've played in these conditions, it's very smart brand of footy. It's been mightily impressive and hopefully she will be okay. Treating her very gingerly as you need to in these situations. And Parker's out there again. He's just giving the them water, blue, the Stella. Blue shit, yeah. He's the water boy. Dead income. Spending more time on the field now than he was playing in the back row for the Broncos. <laughs> <laughs> he went to Alfie and he said, well, what's the secret? Yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, Alan Langer, I understand, was on three Dally M points this year before the voting <laughs> went behind closed doors. I've got to say, he's looking fit, Corey. Retirement seems to be agreeing with him. As OK, that's great. That's the best sight we've seen so far. I see McGregor back up with a smile on her face. Yeah, that's fantastic. And the other thing that a lot of these players aren't used to is 30 minute half. So week in, week out, football is usually 40 minutes. Um, test matches, international level, which a lot of these girls are, are 40 minutes. So with 30 minute halves, if you're in a position like the Roosters, you're under more pressure to turn it around because you just don't have the time um, to live out a set or maybe out, outrun someone. They've got to get it right sooner. Here we are, Judge. Well, Brisbane, fine touch after that penalty. Is that Corey Parker in the background still? Like oh, what, what, what do you think? What do you think, Solly? Blue shirt's a bit of a giveaway. <laughs> Amber Hall inside the 20. It's been strong again this afternoon. The starting props playing a, a great platform for Brisbane. Here's 
Tasman Gray. Taryn Aiken goes down the short side, gives the ball there to Amber Pilly. Stop the metre short of the line. She's looking for a second try of the game. Good tackle, Samai Matalfa on that occasion. Loose ball picked up here by Millie Boyle for Brisbane. They stop her and then drive her back. Miss Foliaki in there. McGregor. Brigham Shaw just held up the pass beautifully on that occasion for Turner. Good defence from the Roosters. Five away from the line. Brisbane on the last tackle. Brigham Shaw tries to catch the napping. Tackled on the last by Ruan Sims. And she's fallen awkwardly here. Let you see Ellie Brigham Shaw. Is it more disappointment? No, she's no, down she's injured hurt. here. Yeah. It was awkward. Again, trying to create something on the last tackle. They've had a bit of joy in this game doing so. It could be anywhere in there. Yeah. Just looking at that, that right leg. Yeah, she seemed to hold it awkwardly and it, it stiffened up as she was falling to the ground. You can see that in slow motion. Again, we can pick everything up when it's not in real time. Well, Joe and Pete, might be 20 nil up, about to go 2 and 0, and pretty much book their spot in the NRLW Grand Final. But this is a big moment. You can see the agony on her face there, Ali Brigginshaw. Yeah, well, Ruan Sims actually falls onto the knee, which is already st straightened. So there's there's no give once that happens. Just unfortunate. But again, up to her feet. It seems to be okay. And I'll just bring it from the field now, surely. Well, yeah, you absolutely. Very game physical coming. game, this one. Don't worry about the scoreline. They've, they've ripped in defensively both teams. That was the last tackle. There was the changeover. So, Ali Brigginshaw coming from the field. And we've got Maynard about to come back into the action. She's jogging off, so... She's running it out. That's how Karen Murphy used to fix Actually, all her injuries. Step step. Just run it out. Just learn from the best. No, the change just made, and there is Ali Brigham Short. That markets. smile should mean that it's not nothing too serious there for the Broncos skipper. Time on, hold. Okay. Now the Roosters as we enter the final five minutes through Caitlin Johnson. Joe, only 18 years of age, Caitlin Johnson. She's had a pretty good afternoon as well too. Kind of oh, she's one of my standouts from last week. She's she had a cracking game, and she's the youngest on the field. She's 18. I was talking to Beck Johnson after the Roosters game last week. She said that Caitlin's a young Aboriginal girl who's come through the knockout competitions, but hasn't played a lot of other football. And I love her style. She's just instinctive and natural. Takes on anybody. Has second players play offloads. I think she's got a big, a big future in the game. The Roosters are looking to shift there from inside their own 10. Something we probably didn't see enough of early on in the game. Maynard. Dib with a kick from well inside her own 30. And tracking back there from Chelsea Baker. Tell me a little bit about Millie Boyle, Joe. Well, Millie Boyle plays up in Queensland for Belly Bears, but is actually from New South Wales, so debuted this year for the Blues and she's actually also played this year for the Wallaroos in the Australian Women's Rugby Union side. Um, her brother plays in the NRL, her dad did play for Canberra Raiders but in her own right she's a really accomplished footballer and she's fairly new to rugby league so I'm excited at the prospect of what she brings to the game now and she's just seems to be for me the next generation of fit hard running props. So you've tried to steal another one basically is what you're saying. Take you one do. of our New South Wales products up over. Didn't North try and border. steal her. No? Didn't try and steal her. Yeah. She played for New South Wales. That's fine. She's welcome to do that. Forward pass here. Joe, <laughs> yeah. so you meant to say yeah. to steal her there. We know. That happened in the past. We know how it happens. No, sore point. You're a bit sensitive about it. Cricket, <laughs> Greg English. <laughs> oh. yeah. Weren't you born in Toowoomba? Yeah, if you don't mind, didn't your parents run a pub in Alra on the Darling Downs? No, 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 no. I was never involved in a pub, and or something. And I'm fairly confident that I was conceived south of the border. 
But you can't prove it's not. One, one weekend. <laughs> Simone Smith. Oh, no. Well, you don't want to see an injury on anyone, especially someone, Joe, who has had as many injuries as what Simone, has, Simone Smith has gone through throughout her checkered career so far. Yeah, that's right. And she, again, like you said, she's had a pretty unlucky injury run and she and it's great to see her back in this at this level she debuted for the Jillaroos not that long ago Thank and you. um player with tremendous potential she's got a lot of skill and hopefully this is just a more a case of um fatigue at the end of a tough game um and they're being more precautionary than anything came down very hard on that shoulder didn't she it was to take the wind out of you. I don't think there was any, any legs getting caught in underneath the tackle. It was just body landing on body. It's good that she was able to get up and play the ball there. Three minutes left. In this encounter, Luan Sims in the Broncos territory. She goes. Good tackle, Amber Hall. Initiating the contact. Rainer Peters in there as well. Maynard. Dib goes to dummy half. Here is Simone Smith just showing it. Goes into the line. Maynard on the last. Kira Dib kicks over the top. Chelsea Baker again beautifully positioned. The Broncos fullback. Well, you're spot on, Peter. So far this game, 10 points coming in the first 10 minutes of the first half. And 10 minutes in the... First 10 minutes of the second half. And outside of that, we've seen the Roosters defend. Right goes through plenty of attack and keep their own line intact as well. A real symmetry about the first and the second half hours. It's been a start to both halves. It's let the Roosters down. Here goes Lavinia Goulds. Last tackle here for Brisbane. Racy McGregor drills that one into touch. And they've certainly got the game in safe keeping. And Joe, we've seen a lot throughout this second half. McGregor and Brigginshaw linking up a lot more than what we saw last week. They're starting to understand each other's game a lot more. Yeah, well, and exactly. Their, their history is fierce opponents. They've been in the halves for New Zealand and Australia. That's the only connection they've really had with each other up until this competition. So. It's natural that it will take a little bit of time, but when you've got two players of their class together, it can only be good for the Broncos, really. Joe, how do you look at tomorrow's Clash Warriors-Dragons? Well, the Dragons, as we know, and now don't have um, Fotu Moala, Tuila Fotu Moala in, so I think the Warriors are going to be hard to beat at their first home, um, home game over in Bounce Smart Stadium, so... I think it'll be close up, but I think the Warriors can get up. Oh, there's another mistake here from Brisbane. Back-to-back -back mistakes. So if you're right there, the Warriors and the Broncos put themselves in great position in regards to a grand final meeting. That's right, and they play, they play, they'll play in a round together and then they could potentially be in the grand final. I, it would be, it'd be great to see the Dragons get up over there. I think that'd be a real testament to them, but... We'll have to wait and see, Stello. They turned it over here, the Roosters. Amber Hall has it for Brisbane. 15 seconds remaining. Time for one, possibly two more plays. Tasman Gray for the Broncos. If she doesn't get up to play it, it will be full time. It was tangled up there. Talisha Harden and Tasman Gray, and the referee says that's enough. Brisbane have defeated the Roosters by 20 points to nil.